everyone. I hope reading is bringing a great cheer to your life. Last Sunday, I was so bored to death, I thought I'll put an Instagram story with a question tag asking my followers what books would they suggest me to read. I randomly picked one. The book was The Collector by John Fowles. Now, this book was suggested by one of my very close friends. Now, I've already read some of the books by John Fowles, such as The French Lieutenant Woman and The Magus. So I thought I'll give you a book review on this book, The Collector, because I had chosen this book to kill the boredom last Sunday. This is a story of a very disturbed and lonely young man in his mid-twenties. He is an immature entomologist who loved collecting butterflies. He used to collect butterflies, put them in boxes and used to preserve them as specimens. From his window, he once saw a woman. Now he gets so obsessed with her that he thought of collecting details about this girl. Now wherever she went, he used to actually trace her. Now, when he first saw this girl, he had a plan in his mind that he wished if he could cage this woman. And that's the moment when in his life, he wins the pools. The pools is basically like a lottery. So when he won a large amount of money, he bought a house. And in this house, he builds a cellar. A cellar is basically a small hidden space. Now, this cellar was constructed in such a way that when he moved the bookshelf, he could see the cellar. This cellar is constructed in such a way that when the bookshelf is turned, only then the cellar will turn up. Now, the protagonist of this novel that I was talking about, his name is Frederick. Now, Frederick gets so obsessed with this woman that he takes his obsession to a whole new level. Now, everyone has their own definition of love. His obsession was his definition of love. Now, Frederick falls in love with this woman. Now, let me tell you about this woman. She is a 20-year-old student who is studying in a prestigious art school. She was born in a privileged middle-class family to parents who had a very dysfunctional relationship. Now, she is a person who is entirely different from Frederick. Miranda is a woman who has appreciation for art. She is always happy, vibrant and has a very zest for life. Now, Frederick executes his plan to kidnap Miranda. Now, Frederick is a character who had this dying need within him. If there was someone who could love him, if there was someone who could make him their world or if there was someone who would only understand him. So, he plans to kidnap Miranda in the middle of a night. He tricks Miranda by telling her that his van had hit a dog. Miranda is so compassionate and so helpful that she enters into the van to, to check the condition of the dead dog. Now, this is the moment when Frederick, he actually chloroforms her and puts her into the van without any eyesight catching them. And he droves to the house that he had brought. He cages her in this cellar. Now, you may be wondering that Frederick might be a psychopath. But I felt that Frederick is basically a sociopath because a sociopath is a person who has a very mere conscience of what is wrong and what is right. They have a very less regard for others as well as for themselves. You know, they don't regard others' safety or they don't even care about their safety. They are basically sort of a little dangerous beings. Now, I let uh, the psyche of a sociopath uh, to enter into my psyche and that's how I was reading this novel. Now, the first half of this novel is the narr narrating voice of Frederick. Now, Frederick disguises himself as Ferdinand to Miranda. He doesn't reveal his real name to Miranda. Now, basically, Ferdinand and Miranda, they are characters from Shakespeare's play, The Tempest. Now, that could be the reason why uh, Frederick had actually disguised his name as Ferdinand because Ferdinand and Miranda are lovers in Shakespeare's play. Frederick thinks that if he could seclude Miranda from human civilization, Miranda would become his possession. But that's not the truth because once uh, Miranda is caged, once she is kidnapped, uh, he actually takes her for a tour in the home and shows her his butterfly collection. 
But once when she sees this butterfly collection, she has a very different attitude towards it. She is a person with a humane nature. She feels sorry for those butterflies. She says that these are such beautiful and delicate creatures. How could you actually you know, trap them in these boxes. Uh, you have trapped the very soul of these butterflies in these boxes. So she only can see these butterflies just like how she would see a, a dead corpse. So that was the attitude that she had towards those dead butterflies. But F Frederick, he has a very different attitude towards it. So basically, he is a sociopath. That's what I have felt. Uh, now, once when you read this novel, if you have a different take on this, do comment it down below. Miranda is not a woman who could be bought with material possession. She had human cravings. She had emotions to be understood, and she also needed human connection. Now, Frederick was entirely a different person. He didn't want any human connection. The only human connection he wanted was that of Miranda. Now, while I was reading this novel, the first half of the novel is the voice of Frederick. Now, Frederick, as I told you, I felt that he is a sociopath and there was a fast-paced turning of the pages. Now, slowly there is a brilliant switch of narrating voice to that of Miranda. Up till now, while you'll be reading in the novel, you will feel that Miranda is a very calm and quiet woman. The half of the novel, that is, the latter half of the novel, is basically the voice of Miranda where she is journaling herself, where she is writing a diary of all the incidents that are happening to her in that cellar with Frederick. Now, this voice was very important. That's what I have felt, though maybe you may have a different take to this, because it reveals the character. It actually unfolds the character of Miranda. It shows the vivacious nature of... Uh, Miranda because though she is imprisoned in this dark room uh, with no hope of seeing the daylight but still she is trying to be you know being content uh, with whatever she is being offered though she is not very happy with it but still she is trying to adjust with her situation she is trying uh, to hope uh, to pray to God to somehow escape from there she is trying to understand Frederick uh, but she will never be able to fall in love with Frederick. Do you think that she would fall in love with a person who appears like a beast, uh, who kidnaps her and creates such a horrible situation for her? So I felt that the voice of Miranda is very important in this novel because it sort of normalizes uh, the traumatizing incident that is being taken place uh, with Miranda. This novel sort of upsets us when we think about Miranda's suffering. Uh, because towards the end of the novel, Miranda falls sick and Frederick never consults a doctor. He actually brings medicines for her according to his little knowledge of whatever sickness that she was suffering from. So does Miranda survive? Now what if Miranda dies? Does Ferdinand hunt for a new victim that he could cage and force her to fall in love with him? Or does Miranda fall in love with Ferdinand and does this novel have a happy ending? You can find it by yourself by giving this book a read. I would highly recommend you to read this book because this book would definitely pin your interest and send shiver down your spine till the last page of this book. I hope you would love reading this book. If you have any suggestions for any of the books that you would like me to review, so please do put it in the comment section down below. See you in the next video with a new book review. Till then, stay tuned.